Hello everybody, this is Spyman 342 with chapter 13 of Anthropology. I've actually made it this far. I really, I really am surprised. This has been going so well, so. Here we go. A chance of rain. Lara woke up to the smell of something baking. Was that cinnamon? Bon bon must be making breakfast. She pulled herself up and rubbed her eyes. Then she stared at her hands. That's right, she was human now. The sun was streaming in through the window, and she could see a carriage moving past on its own right through the streets of France. After taking a moment to readjust, Lyra stuck her legs over the side of the bed and stood up, steadying herself against the bed with one arm. She stretched to get rid of the stiffness. There were voices coming from downstairs, and not one she recognized. The words were hard to make out, but it didn't sound like any of the humans she was staying with. She scratched her head and headed downstairs to the kitchen. Andre was sitting at the table, staring at a silver box on the kitchen counter. Her hair wasn't tied back like it had been yesterday and hung down over her shoulders. She was also wearing glasses, even though she apparently didn't need them before. She turned her head when she saw Lyra enter. Good morning. Good morning, Lyra said, yawning. She looked at the thing Audrey had been staring at. It seemed like it was the source of all the other voices. We're back with our continued coverage of the presidential campaign. Ilzaki was talking to nobody in particular. Audrey was hardly paying attention to it now. She picked up the long black object and the box suddenly went silent. Mom and Dad left for work already, Audrey said, pulling Lyra's attention away. You slept pretty late. I was almost going to go and wake you up. Yeah, I tend to sleep late, Lyra said. Great hair, by the way. Even crazier than usual, Audrey said. I can lend you a brush if you really need one. After you eat, if you want. The smells were irre irresistibly stronger now, and these, fam and these were familiar ones. You made breakfast? Lyra asked. She ran her fingers through her hair, trying to get... You get it to stay down, without much success. Cinnamon rolls. That's fine with you, right? Audrey said. I still feel awful about yesterday. No, it's fine, Lyra replied. Great, actually. My roommate used to make these all the time. He's a professional baker. <laughs> I'm definitely not, Audrey said, with a smile. They're just Pillsbury. She noticed Lyra was confused again. Prepackaged. All I did was turn on the oven and put them in. Lyra was just glad to see some recognizable food. She headed over to the stove, where there was a pan waiting on top. A plate and some silverware was sitting on the side. I made coffee, too, if you'd like some. No, thanks, Lyra said. I don't really like it. Too bitter. Even when everything else seemed so unfamiliar, there could still be some, something recognizable in the human world. Plenty of ponies like coffee. Pony Joe made some, most of his money off of that back in Canterlot. Lyra had given it a chance a few years back. Even when she tried to dump it in, dump in as much sugar as possible, she had never really gotten used to the flavor. She she took a seat across the table from her human friend. That still seemed to be too good to be true. Not too long ago, Lyra would have never imagined sitting down to eat breakfast with a real human. Lyra took a bite. Even, even though the cinnamon, cinnamon rolls weren't quite as good as what Bonbon bon made, she still liked them. The silver box behind her. The silver box was behind her. She turned to get a better look, and, as impossible as it was, there, was a, there were human figures inside, through a window. There were words all around the figures, too many to focus on, all moving around. The human's lips moved, but no sound was coming out anymore. It's been nothing but election coverage. I'm really getting tired of it. I guess I should probably pay more attention to it. I mean, we'll both be voting in another year, Andre said. I assume you will be, at least. Are you a Democrat or a Republican? Lyra stared at her. I don't know. Undecided? I guess it's no big deal, Andre shrugged. So anyways, your roommate? Huh? What about her? She was a professional baker, you said. 
Yeah, more of a confectioner. Candy and sweets and stuff, Lyra said. She took another bite. I love that kind of food, so it worked out well. Andre nodded. And how old was she? A few months older than me. That's still pretty young to be a professional, Andre said. Not really. She worked for years before even before she even got hired where she is now, Lara said. But, uh, what do your parents do? She wanted to change the subject back to humans. Thinking about home was a little difficult right now. Dad works for principal in, in 108 Grand. That's the tall building in the middle of town, Andre said. And mom's a teacher, middle school English. She's still got some summer classes going on. So, a teacher, and... Lara wasn't sure what to make of the other one. So, uh, what's English? You mean, like England? It was one of the human nations she recognized from her books. She was still unfamiliar with how human society worked, with all these different countries. They couldn't possibly have teachers for all, all the other ones, too. You know, English, literature, writing, language arts, Andre said. Lyra, what you told me yesterday really worries me. I think you were probably taken out of school too early. What exactly happened? She shrugged. That's when everybody graduated. Audrey frowned and raised an eyebrow. Okay, so what school did you go to? Lyra hesitated. It's, uh, what did she say? Audrey had laughed at the idea of magic when she had brought it up yesterday. The Canterlot Magic Academy had been a good school, but clearly human educa education worked differently. Oh, uh, you know, school. Audrey leaned back in her chair and folded her arms. Fine, she said. I really just want to see more of this place. I walked around a little yesterday, but there's even more out there. I don't really want to think about home right now. Lyra, Andre hesitated. When I talked to my parents yesterday, they said the same thing I'd been thinking. You need professional help. You're doing just fine, Lyra said. You're doing plenty just by letting me stay here. I really appreciate it. Well, yes, but I mean therapy. Bon Bon had said that a few times, too. Why would Audrey be saying that? Her very existence proved that Lyra wasn't crazy. What do you mean? Lyra asked. Obviously, you can't afford it in your current situation, and we can't really spend that much either. But, at the very least, it would help if both of us, it would help both of us if you just told me more about where you came from. I told you, it doesn't, it does matter, Lyra. Why would you leave your parents' house when you were so young, for one thing? What did they do? Nothing. They just decided it was time that I knew the truth about myself. My parents always did the best they could for me. Andre had said that she was the same age as Lyra, and yet she still lived with her parents. They were going to work, but she still had a few years of school left. Lyra wasn't sure if she could even consider herself an adult anymore. But that seemed ridiculous. She'd been able to take care of herself for years. Andre sighed. I know you don't really want to talk about it, but is any of this even true? What you've been saying hasn't made any sense. Of course it's true, Lara said. I get that your work, I mean, this place works differently than where I'm from. But this is all normal for me when I used to live. I just find it hard to believe that you'd get up and leave everything and everyone behind like that. My life back at home was completely fine, Lara said. I guess I always felt like I didn't belong there. When I found out my real family, that explained why. I just, need, I just need to know where I'm supposed to be. Audrey picked up her mug and finished the now cold coffee, which had stopped streaming a long time ago. I'd like to help find your parents. I just don't see how we'll get anywhere with just a photo, much less one that's at least as old as I am, she said. Have you considered going back home? It sounds like you have plenty of friends there. That's just... It isn't possible anymore, Lyra said. Why not? It's too hard to explain. Lyra started, stared at her empty plate. Trust me, 
I really am trying to, telling you the truth. I'm sorry if I'm coming across as intrusive, but as long as you're staying with us, we just want to know a little bit more about where you're coming from, Audrey said. Anyways, what's your plan for today? Let's just take it one day at a time. I thought I'd go out and play some more. I, s I still need to make some more money, Lara said. Oh, that's right. Did you get a permit? Andre said. I did some research er online earlier. The city's pretty good about street musicians, but you do need a permit. Oh, I never thought about that, Lara said. She wondered how Andre could have had the time to look up that information just today. How long has she been awake? I used to pay in public all the time. I never had any problems with that before. Well, you were just lucky nobody called you out on it. You should probably get one today, before you try any more. It's just five dollars. Oh, and take your ID. Huh? Which reminds me. Andre's fingers drummed against the table. You never told me your last name. You could at least do that, right? She smiled. Lyra sat there for a moment. My last name? Yeah. She glanced sideways. That's a problem. I don't know what it is, she said. I still don't know anything about my parents. But you must have gone by something back where you were from, Andre said. What about your adopted family? Lyra shook her head. No, I've always just been Lyra. Well, actually, heartstrings. But if Twilight sounded like a weird name to a human, to a human, what would they think about that one? So, no last name, and no ID. No. Getting fined for playing would definitely be a counterproductive. Andre rubbed her forehead. I really don't know what I got myself into, she muttered. Sorry, Lyra said. I told you, things were really different where I grew up. I can tell that. She glanced over at the box in the counter again. A human figure was inside it. Behind him was a confusing mess of color. She, he seemed to be gesturing to one region. Andre picked up the long black object from the table. Oh, the weather's on. She pointed at the box and the human's voice could be heard again. Should we see some cloud cover and slight chance of rain in the afternoon? The colors behind it vanished and were replaced by a series of numbers and small icon, icons of suns and rain clouds. They said earlier it might rain around three or four, Andre said, pointing at the box. If you're still going back out again for anything, you should try to do you should try to be back by then. Lyra's head was turned and her eyes were glued on the box, but she nodded. Yeah. Then, after a moment of consideration, she added my mom used to work in weather. Oh, really? Like an anchor or... Production, Lara said, frowning. She hadn't said anything about boats. Andre nodded. But I don't suppose you'll tell me the name of the station. It really doesn't matter. I guess that's a start. If you really want to, t if you really want to tell me anything else, you can trust me. You know that, right? Yeah, of course, Lara said. She idly picked up the fork, even though she w was done eating. She held it between her fingers and examined it with curiosity. After a moment, she looked up again. Actually, one question. Shoot. Is there somewhere I could buy some more clothes? I didn't pack much with me when I left. Yeah, there are a few thrift stores downtown. It's not that far of a walk if you want to head out later today. I think I will. They cleaned up the breakfast dishes together, and Lyra headed upstairs to get ready. Lyra stood in the bathroom in front of a mirror, with a green-haired human staring back at her. She was almost surprised to see her reflection move the same time as her, and she picked up the hairbrush. She still couldn't believe that was her. The handle fit in her, in her palm perfectly. It was almost exactly like the kind she would use on her mane when she was still a pony, but now she was using it the right way. Moments like these seemed to bring everything into perspective. Even th something as simple as a hairbrush had been designed by humans. This world's past was probably a, like, a lot like the other, if you go back a few centuries. 
But how far exactly? She ran the brush through her, through her hair, trying to brush out her bed head as much as possible. It still stuck up a little on the top, but it, that didn't matter. With one look in her reflection, she decided it was good enough. She took another moment to admire her new self. She really did look startlingly similar to that picture that she'd done a few months back. Part of her had always known she was meant to be human. Lara headed back into her room and stood in front of the window. The weather report had said it scheduled rain between 3 or 4, so she'd wait until it was o that was over before heading out, of the out to the store. The clouds had already moved out, and the sky was gray. For now, she checked out the bookshelves in her room, like she'd been planning to go on the night before. There were so many books here that she hardly knew where to start. This was, quite literally, the entire world of information that she'd just beginning to tap into. There was a series of books, big hardcovers that increased in thickness, called Harry Potter. It looked like fiction, though. The titles reminded her too much of daring do adventures she read as a filly. Actually, a lot of these books seemed like fiction. There was an entire shelf of books by some human named William Shakespeare that seemed to be plays, to be plays when Lyra looked inside. Lyra would have been would have really preferred a history of human world, but here was something, understanding human nature, that was perfect. She took it with her and sat on her bed. Starting with the introduction, it seemed to focus more on psychology than anything else, but that was that was good too. The preface said it was intended to prove improve relationships with our fellow human beings. Practical application was exactly what she wanted to understand. She read the first few chapters, but this wasn't what she'd been expecting. All this stuff was about consciousness and the psyche. It was too bad that Twilight wasn't here to explain all these words what all these words meant. And it certainly didn't explain the human world very well. Lara, Lara glanced up at the window. It wasn't raining yet. She wondered if she had the wrong time, but she was almost certain it would have started by now. It was still cloudy, but it was dry. She closed the book and set it down on the nightstand. It was getting late, so she should probably be he head out before long. Besides, she'd been reading about humans her whole life. What she, what she really wanted to do is to go out and be part of this place. Practical application, like the book said. The wad of human money was sitting there, so she picked it up and put it in her pocket. Eventually, she'd run out. It was hard to tell if she'd even made a lot from her, perform from her, ugh, from her performance yesterday. And she needed a permit? This was getting too difficult. Heading downstairs, she found Andre putting dishes back into the cupboards. She watched her for a while, the way she picked up a few plates in her hands, stacked them, and moved them up to the cupboard four or five at a time. Andre stopped, noticing she was being watched. Can I help you? No, I was just... Uh, I think I'm going to head out to the store now, Lyra said. Are you coming? I've still got a few chores to do. There are a few thrift stores downtown, just head past the park that I met you in, and it's a few blocks past the Capitol building. You'll know one when you see it. Lara had been right. This was the Capitol City. Maybe more of a typical human city would be smaller, more like Ponyville, or at least Manhattan. But of all the places she could have started her life out as a human, it was so exciting to be here. I think I'll be able to find it. Thanks. Yeah, be careful out there, Andre said. I'll try to be back before too long. Lyra headed out for the front door and went back out into the human neighborhood. She took a moment to orient herself, trying to recall how she'd gotten here the day before. They'd come back from that restaurant. She shuddered as she remembered it. But the park would be down the street from that. She started down the sidewalk in that direction instead, enjoying the cool breeze. She passed a couple of humans walking a dog on a leash. It was a small black one, not quite up to her knee. It wagged its tail as it looked up at her. The human holding the leash gave her a nod, and she smiled back at him. 
even with this being a big neighborhood, there was there were rarely as many humans walking outside as there would be ponies in Ponyville. It was a little odd. The park was easy enough to find out find a few minutes later, and then down the street, that building with the domed towers must be the capital. That made sense. It wasn't a stall of the Canterlot Castle, but it was still a very impressive in structure and similar sense of majesty. That's my neighbors. Lara wondered if they ever held parties there, like the gala. Downtown, there would be buildings starting to get closer, closer together. There would be more carriages driving past now, and more humans on the sidewalks. Lara, Lara was almost getting used to seeing them. Almost. As Lara headed into one of the shops, she took another glance upwards. They hadn't cleared the clouds away yet, even though the rain had been called off. Why bother sending out a weather report if they weren't going to adhere to it? She shook her head and walked inside. She checked the money she had brought with her. Human currency was still hard to understand, but she was beginning to work out her way through it. The paper ones were called dollars, and those seemed to be like they were actually worth more than the coins. There was literally no difference between the five and the one dollar bills other than the other than what was printed on them. Still, humans considered that normal. But it was easy to get sidetracked when there were so many human clothes for sale. There would be so many more casual outfits than there would be in Equestria. Maybe partly it was that because she'd grown up in Canterlot, but it was also because humans wore clothes all the time. She noticed yesterday that the different colors and design made up for the lack of variation in their own physical appearances. Lara knew that she had to stay focused on what she was actually going to purchase. She counted through the money she'd brought and tried to make sense of the price tags on the clothes. She could buy a few outfits, but that was going to blow through her remaining funds in a hurry. At least she didn't have to worry about paying for food or a place to stay. For as long as she wanted, she was in town, at least. It wasn't until she checked what she realized most of the shirts she picked out were green. She'd just chosen what she thought would look good on her. Maybe green was just her color. As she handed each item to the cashier, she took a look outside. There were droplets forming on the windows. Rain? Um, excuse me, what time is it? Lyra said. Maybe her sense of time was off. The human working at the register checked her watch. It's almost five. Seriously? Lyra said. The weather report had said it was supposed to rain between three or four today. They were completely off schedule. Lara mm -hmm. shook her head. Her mother never would have allowed this. Not even Rainbow Dash would have slacked off that much. Are you in a hurry or something? Be careful out there. Lara handed over the money for her clothes. As she had expected, she was nearly out. Before long, she had to earn some more, somehow. The human handed her the bags with her clothes inside, and she took them. These strings at the top. Most ponies would have thought that they were used to, they were to holding your mouth. Maybe that's what they become to equestrians, but it made so much more sense to hold those in your hands, if you were lucky to have them, that was. Lara was about to head outside, but she stopped. She decided she didn't really feel like heading into the humans' poorly timed brainstorm right now. They probably cut it off after an hour or so, like it had been scheduled. Lara wasn't sure how they, how they did it, if humans couldn't fly. But they did other impossible things. They could probably reach the clouds if they really wanted to. She stood near the exit, watching the spray of water as carriages zoomed through the rain. Turning back to the store, she considered looking around some more. She obviously couldn't buy anything else, but human fashions and goods were as interesting enough to look through the second time. There was a bulletin board and some flyers posted near the exit. Lyra read some of them over. Her eyes stopped at one in particular. A word had grabbed her attention. She read it over again. Tore it off the pins that it was hung up on. Maybe this was the answer she needed. Once it had cleared up, 
Lara hurried back to the house with a grin on her face. She couldn't remember the last time she had been this excited. Well, maybe when she, was, when she first got to Des Moines, but this was way better. She swung the front door open and called out, Andre? In here? The voice came out from the living room. Lara headed in to find out the black box turned on. Just like the smaller one in the kitchen, the glass panel was now showing images of humans in different places. Andre was sitting in the recliner in front of it. Mom's home. We've been waiting for you to get back. Did you get caught up? Did you get caught in that rain? Lara handed her a flyer. Hey, look at this. Huh? Andre stared at it for a while and read it. Lyra, you know you're supposed to take one of these tabs from the bottom, right? Not steal the whole thing. She pointed to the flags, flaps of paper hanging out from the bottom. Those were just numbers. I wasn't really sure what they meant, Lyra said. Actually, I don't know what a lot of it means, but they need musicians, so that's me. It's a phone number, Andre said. She looked up at her. What do you mean you didn't know what it meant? Lara ignored the question. We both know I need a way to make money, and I make a ton more if I do actual performances. Playing in public is just really just a side thing. Audrey stared at her. Audrey started to read the flyer. Seeking musicians for a hard rock band. Leading guitar, drums. Influences include GNR, Aerosmith, ACDC, Deep Purple. Lyra, this is a rock band. She looked back up. Huh? Lyra frowned. Well, I mean, I've heard of that. It's not all popular back home, but I'm pretty sure it's. I know what it's like. Playing Lyra would be, what, classical? Folk? I don't know. The point is, there's not really a need for a band, for that in a band like this, Audrey said. Looks like they need a guitarist. Guitars? Lyra nodded. Another human design instrument. I've heard of those before. You've heard of them, Audrey said. Sounds like you're all set. Yeah, I mean, I've heard they can be difficult to play, but I think I'm up for it. Lara was examining her fingers. Placing a hand on her forehead, Andre said, No, I mean... She sighed. I guess that might be useful to learn. There's definitely more in demand for that than the liar. If this is the kind of music that's popular with humans, then I want to learn it, Lyra said. Um, what? I think I can do it. Music's my special talent. Andre rubbed her forehead. Just when I thought I was starting to understand you. Anyways, I'm going to go up and drop these upstairs. Lyra grabbed a flyer from, back from Andre and took it with her. We're just about to have dinner, Andre called out after her. Lara nearly tripped over the unexpected narrow stairs, but caught herself just in time and hurried back up. Lara headed back to the guest room and left her shopping bags there. The flyer she left tucked in, tucked in behind her in her pages of her journal. She paused for a moment when she saw the liar case. Then she headed back down to eat. Dinner that night was lasagna, which Lara was assured was mostly cheese and tomato sauce, contained absolutely no meat. Andre's mother had made it. They said it was Italian, yet another reference to a human nation. Lara hadn't realized how interconnected they all were. After they had finished, it had gone dark outside. Lara was back in her bedroom, taking another look in her books. She was in the middle of one when Andre interrupted her. Hey, Lyra, about that flyer earlier. She was leaning against the doorframe, holding out that little thing in her hand. She called it Nathan yesterday, if Lyra's memory was correct. Her wrist moved around in idle motion. Yeah? Well, I don't know how joining the band will go, but if you really want to start playing guitar, turns out I know someone who can help you with that. <laughs>